Thank you very much. Um, and first of all, thank you very much also to the organizers um, to invite us here, not only me, but also my colleagues from AfD and from JICA. Um, first of all, because I think the, the issue of investment in Africa is crucial. It's crucial for the development of Africa, but it's also crucial for Europe and maybe also crucial for the world. So uh, congratulations to put this issue so high on the agenda and to invite us, um, maybe representing also a little bit different approaches to the issue, um, but complementarity ones. And uh, I would like to stress uh, this point uh, afterwards at the end. Why is it so important to refocus um, development cooperation on uh, investment and on the business uh, sector. Um, I think if you have a look on, on what, what did we have achieved uh, regarding the Millennium Development Goals, we can see that we had been quite successful in approaching the social dimension of development. So we have a very good performance um, jointly with our African and other partners worldwide in education and health. So a lot of the basic indicators um, uh, the um, uh, human development indicators had, uh, have been improved. But if we have a look on job creation and on economic development, especially in sub-Saharan Africa, we have to admit that we have to rethink, have we been jointly sufficiently successful? And I have the feeling, no, we haven't. So it's really time to rethink our approaches and to rethink what we are doing there. And um, why is it so important? Because just, in, just only a few numbers again. Um, by 2050, we know that the population of Africa will have been doubled. So we are then confronted with 2.6 billion people in Africa. And we are then in need of maybe 20 million new jobs created every year yeah. in Africa. And these jobs, decent jobs, it can only be created if there is a totally refocus on investments. And that's why investments are so, so important. Public investors will not create these jobs. Private investors, the private sector has to. And public sector has to be um, uh, really the one who's enabling private investment. And uh, there, I think we heard already, I do not have to re uh, repeat what um, uh, uh, Madame said already, because I think we, we agree that the frame conditions, for example, are a major bottleneck for, um, for investment. So creating conducive environment for investment is key. Uh, being the legal, legal environment, um, being red tape, corruption, uncertainty, policy changes, everything which you, which you, which you uh, said. Also the, the, the gap of public infrastructure, also vocational training, and uh, I would say also the environment, the framework for entrepreneurship. You know, a clever uh, SME policy to support investments, not only foreign direct investments. I think foreign direct investments are needed, but uh, we, we need also national investments, regional investments. We need investments from all sides. So, but if I reflect on our own experiences, and we are working a lot in the field of improving the business environment. We work very closely together with our partners in Africa. And yes, we are sometimes also successful. But this is not enough. And it takes too long. It takes too long in order to cope with this dynamic of the population development and other issues which are, uh, which are needed. So I think what we have jointly to reconsider is, do we have to refocus a little bit our activities on investment um, opportunities? Because according to my observation, especially in more and more um, uh, uh, let's say, more and more difficult environments, like fragile contexts and other contexts, where do the projects where investors could invest in are coming from? So there is a need to build up a proper pipeline for bankable or investable projects. And at least we would like, in reconsidering our own activities, we would like to go a little bit downstream on our activities not only concentrating any more on the environment, you know, the conducive environment conditions, but also being more directly involved in investments by preparing bankable projects, by building up a project pipeline which should then be matched with my colleague from AfD or other investors. You know, we are starting to cooperate cl more closely with the AfD, with the AEB, with the African development, with African pension funds and others to match 
their investment interest with bankable projects. But this is, this is a hard way to go. It's not so easy. There's a lot of capacity development needed in order to come up with proper investment opportunities. So this is the one thing um, we would like to change. The other thing um, I still see very important is, and we discussed this in the framework of different Africa-related initiatives, like the Compact for Africa or Marshall Plan with Africa or whatever, um, is how do, we, how do we do huge public investments in infrastructure? <clears throat> Our experience is that if we work more closely together, and we, we did this, for example, um, in Ethiopia, when we, when, we, when we helped the Ethiopian government in building up 10 universities in the whole, in the whole country. So the basic idea was not only to invest in educational infrastructure, which was a, such a good idea if you want to take, take off, but also by building 10 universities all over the country to supporting small-scale industry in, and, and, and to build up the whole construction sector, starting with the vocational training and starting with, with small-scale industries of Ethiopia to become real entrepreneurs and then being able to serve the needs of the country and maybe also of, of, of the region. So I think we have to better, or to, to better connect our activities in strengthen a certain sector with huge public investments. And for that, I think we jointly should more selectively um, identify where are the sectors where huge employment opportunities are, and there are a lot of opportunities, in all, and, and, as you said, and then jointly try to, to connect better public infrastructure investment with our activities of strengthening small-scale industry, vocational training, and so on and so forth. Those, this would be the, the second point. <clears throat> and um, the third point, I still believe, and there are a lot of, of, of efforts at the moment in the German government as well, to better link also um, the support for foreign direct investment with development cooperation. So to link better our instruments in order uh, to, to be more uh, cohesive at, at, at this point. And um, I still believe with our, you know, with Hermes and with other instruments, we can foster for foreign direct investment. And then maybe if we know where in which sector those investments are most probable leading to employment, um, attach our own activities in the development sectors to those investments. And I think there we could learn a lot from our colleagues from Japan, as this was is a, a long history of, um, of foreign policy and development policy of Japan to better connect foreign direct investment from Japanese enterprises with development cooperation. So I think we are at the stage, and that's why it's good that we are here, to rethink and reevaluate also our joint experiences, and then to come up with a more coherent, more comprehensive, more selective, and more promising development approach. Thank you very much.